I want to give you guys an update on Dencon, the upgrade for Ethereum, and what this might mean. There's actually some reports now to where we can give you guys some insights. It's going to be good. My name is Paul Barron. Welcome back into Tech Path. Before we get started, thanking our sponsor, and that is iTrust Capital. If you guys are looking at long-term holding of crypto, one of the ways you can do it is a crypto IRA. So just jump over to the iTrust Capital website. You'll get a $100 funding reward if you decide to use our code down below. It does help the channel, so try to do that. You can hold your Ethereum in there and also your Bitcoin. No monthly fees. All you do is, is pay a little fee on your trades, just like a normal exchange. So check it out, itrustcapital.com. All right, so we were showing you guys this chart yesterday or the day before on our ETH video on the Denkin upgrade. This is a good example of it, what the expectations were for fees uh, from a projection standpoint. You can kind of see it from 38 cents down to four, et cetera, Arbitrum, Polygon, all reducing quite a bit for sure. Another thing that if you look at it for base, the fees were even much lower. Uh, notice though, this is a 0034 rate from 17 cents. Mainly these are the gas fees for being able to transact on Ethereum uh, in layer two. So that was the purpose of Dencon. All right, so one thing you can see from Jesse Pollock, this is one of the guys that leads Coinbase's base team after two years hard of hard work. Um, but after the Dencon, it's actually instead of you know, what we showed was two zeros. It's actually three zeros, 0 0.0005 in terms of the fee. I'm going to kind of zoom in on that. And then it shows some of the, the base transactions pre and then post right there in terms of network fees. So this is good for base and it's good for a lot of projects to maybe look at base as an alternative for their layer two. Fastest and cheapest in a way to send Ethereum is on base. Now you can kind of see it right here as it lines up against the ETH, Arbitrum, Avalanche, C-Chain, Optimism, etc. All right, and some of those issues uh, I'll explain in a second, but this right here is just a good example of how it compares against Solana. Much cheaper right now than Solana. So that's another advantage for base. Uh, okay, so I want to go to a clip real quick. This is based on the fee reductions, them talking about it. Listen in. Put those things together, and that means blobs are basically going to be free at first. Um, and so if you do the math with that, uh, we're going to see 90 to 99% um, drops in, in uh, L2 transaction fees on base and, and other super chain chains. I think even over the longer term, it's going to be at least 10x. Um, and it sets us, sets us up for more growth in the future as well, right? This is, uh, I like to emphasize that uh, the, this version of 4844 is just an incremental step towards a more um, aggressive sharding strategy for uh, and, and blob growth strategy for, for L2s in, in Ethereum. Yeah, and this is something I, I think most people don't realize is this is just the beginning. We're going to actually be able to increase this blob space capacity, you know, every six to 12 months, kind of forever, uh, to keep up scaling uh, with all the, the new transaction growth that's coming on Ethereum. All right, so what that simply means is that scalability has just been introduced into layer twos maybe unlimited scalability. We'll see. But the point being is that transaction costs will continue to drive themselves down. And that is a huge, huge deal for all of their L2s. Now, the, the one thing I was kind of explaining here. All right. So to do anything on Optimism, you've got to have ETH in the wallet. So you've got to be able to go into the bridge. So this is showing the bridge uh, right there on ETH uh, to base. And you can kind of see here, we're just putting in a, you know, a number but on uh, one ETH. But if you look here, the network fees, pretty low, right? In terms of being able to transact that. The problem is when you actually connect your wallet and go in, what you have on the backside are the ETH network fees. So there's still a fairly good fee. Now there is a solution that BASE is working on that'll fix this. This is so important. And I'm gonna go to a clip real quick. They'll explain it, listen in. I think it's going to really open up an entirely new class of applications and bring on an entirely new cohort of users. Um, we you know, at Coinbase, we're investing heavily in smart contract wallets. Um, I think we're going to see things like apps starting to pay for gas, right? Not users having to pay for gas. Um, and that is enabled by smart contract wallets. And smart contract wallets are enabled by low fees. So as you can see, the dApps will be the bearer of the wallet cost or the, the exchange fee costs uh, of being able to go into that. Is that sustainable? Yeah, it could be in terms of a strategy to be able to draw in a lot of people within this larger ecosystem with what BASE is doing. So here's a good example of one that is already covering gas fees on this one. So they launched Superchain App Accelerator. It's $3 million fund. Optimism for on-chain apps to cover their users' gas fees. That's straight up kind of the point here that they were talking about there at BASE. 
All good. Listen in to the clip that they were talking about here. Decentralized social is taking off. Web3 gaming is exploding. Layer 2s are experiencing more activity than ever before. However, Web3 is still a daunting place for users. Using a Web3 app is complex and expensive, with high gas fees and a poor user experience. It's time to kill the friction. We're excited to announce that we're partnering with Optimism to inject over $3 million into the Web3 development ecosystem, bringing the cost to use Web3 apps built on the super chain down to zero. No ETH required. Builders who qualify will receive sponsorship for contract deployments, account abstraction, and gas fees for your app's user. Give them access to this broad user base and extensive distribution. All right, so talking about Polygon, this is kind of the layout of what they're going to do, uh, which is really talking about this item right there, which is the Feijoa upgrade. Now, what does that mean in terms of timeline? The timeline kind of rolls it out right here on the Polygon uh, tech site. Polygon ZK EVM 844 estimated to go live on mainnet around May 1st. That's a little bit further away than I kind of thought. So that in itself, a little bit behind there, but hey, listen, everybody's going to be kind of working this into their systems. I think this is the key of being able to grow in layer two. Definitely a big one. Let me jump to another piece right here. This is kind of what they're talking about. Uh, Polygon, a proof of stake chain, doesn't benefit from 4844. It's not a roll up. Therefore, it doesn't use Ethereum call data as stored transaction. For Polygon CDK chains, support 4844 will be included later this year. So more delay there. I think that's maybe one of the disadvantages, you know, of where this plays into the situation around layer two. So but I think optimism wins on this. Base is obviously going to be uh, winning in a big way, for sure. The other one is going to be Avalanche. And this is Dexalot coming in because this is a pretty interesting component as well. Dexalot and Arbitrum now being able to remember Dexalot is a cross-chain uh, Dex. So that in itself, pretty cool. Uh, you have to kind of look at the entire uh, ecosystem where many of these projects are, are aligned and where some of these things are going to be able to expand from. So pretty interesting stuff here, of course, is Dexalot after that announcement. It exploded on the charts and uh, a lot went up, uh, being the token, a lot went up uh, appropriately. So that's kind of expected here. Avalanche is going to continue to do some pretty cool things. All right, so one thing to kind of compare here is also the uh, just the potential launch on Arbitrum or when they launch on Arbitrum. You're going to continue to see this thing uh, in terms of data volume absolutely explode. So Dexalot, on the look for that one as well. I want to jump over to a clip we did with the Wagme team. It's been a while, I think maybe five, six months ago, and we were talking to them about the potential shift of Wagme. Listen in. So you guys on your Twitter, you had uh, you did your announcement. You had the September 27th drop. Uh, first of all, how did it go? You know, to be honest with you, it, it didn't go as well as we expected it to. There was a little bit of some hoops that you guys had to jump through. It, it, right now, the way the OpenSea Mint worked, because we were actually featured on OpenSea, is we had to leverage what they had to do as far as the Mint was concerned. Right. So they didn't have L2 on IMX quite yet. So therefore, you know, having to do the L1 for the actual packs. When I look at IMX, I just look at, you know, there's a limited amount of, of featured marketplaces here. Yeah, I still look at, you know, obviously things like Avalanche, uh, Solana, you know, some of those other platforms that are eventually going to grow. So is this in your roadmap at some point to maybe look at some alternatives there? I, I mean, I, do you feel trapped in IMX at all? All right, so that was something we talked about. Obviously, IMX is a, is a very good project launch pad for many games coming into the ecosystem, but Wagme made a move, and this was Scott Herman talking about. It. I'm very excited. We've been working for this for quite some time, Wagme. Now going over to base. So that's a pretty big deal. Even Brian Armstrong retweeted this. So uh, very important with uh, games, because if it does show the path for some of these projects to be able to migrate, it'd be kind of interesting to see how this goes. Remember, transaction and volume and ecosystem matters in a big way. And now you're talking about something with this upgrade that is going to be replicated to be able to continue to reduce fees as transaction scale climbs. So all good signs for everything. Another one to watch that you need to pay attention to is this one right here, Aether Games. Now, I'm going to zoom in on this right here. I want you to look at that. That Q2 2024, what do you see there? Aether Subnet. Now, this is another one that could be moving. And if this one moves, it's going to most likely go into the Avalanche ecosystem. So 
have we discovered, maybe by mistake or intention, that Aether Games is moving their way over to AVAX? Interesting stuff, man. I think this is, a, this is the cycle in which a lot of these projects, games, and innovation that are happening in these key gaming centers, whether it is in Layer 2 on ETH, whether you look at Solana, what they've been able to do, and also Avalanche, all of this really kind of jumping in. Pulsar is getting ready to launch as well. By the way, we're going to be doing a huge giveaway for Pulsar on some NFTs. You guys don't want to miss it. Uh, I think we're going to be doing that video on Friday, so make sure and subscribe to the channel right now. Uh, we'll be dropping that in the video, and you guys will have an ac access to a, a PBN-only uh, NFT pack that is unbelievable. It's, you guys are going to love it. So uh, subscribe to the channel. Make sure and like this video if you guys uh, want more content like this. We always love it. And of course, catch me out there on X at Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time right here on Tech Bath.